Global warming, contrary to the controversies that are in the uh, popular media these days, is, is clearly happening. Uh, climate change is, is something that we're experiencing already as a globe. Um, f we have been actually for the last 30 or so years quite, quite clearly and uh, unfortunately we expect to continue to experience further climate change and warming over coming decades. That's, that's unequivocal. We're seeing a gradual increase in the intensity of heat waves um, in the northern part of the United States and, and the models that um, are looking out 20 or 30 years are suggesting that uh, that will become even more intense. So, Summer temperatures are going to get hotter and, and the length and the intensity of heat waves will become more intense. So we have, to, um, we have to be concerned about the impacts that that will have on our, um, on our urban populations, particularly for the, for the elderly um, and for, for people with pre-existing diseases. Um, another, another fairly immediate impact that we're beginning to observe is changes in the uh, season for pollen and allergy. Um, uh, trees and grasses and weeds uh, are sensitive to the way climate um, changes and, and the temperatures that occur and also to carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. The fact that it's warm enough for us to live here has to do with the fact that the atmosphere serves as a greenhouse. It, it, actually, it actually gets warm because of the gases that are in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a really important component of the atmosphere. It's simple chemistry that if you increase the concentrations, the amounts of those gases, particularly CO2, carbon dioxide, um, which comes out of every exhaust pipe and every power plant stack, wh whenever coal or oil is burned or natural gas, carbon dioxide is being spewed out. And, and as a result, the concentrations have increased. Um, actually, if you look back from the Industrial Revolution to the present time, we see a very steady and, and alarming increase in carbon dioxide concentrations. Um, a little bit is okay. The Earth system can actually absorb uh, quite a lot of the CO2, but you know, steadily over time, it's increased in concentration. So that, that warming blanket of carbon dioxide that has been essential to life on Earth is now getting to be a little bit, you know, we're, we're piling on extra blankets and it's getting hotter. We would, we would need to reduce our burning of fossil fuels, reduce our burning of coal, reduce our burning of oil. We, and ways to do that would be to improve the energy efficiency of all the things that we use that do burn those things. Um, and, and so we can maximize efficiency. That'll help a little bit. We can also um, uh, investigate and invest in uh, technologies to capture the carbon dioxide that comes out of the um, polluting devices, particularly at power plants, coal-fired power plants, the, the technology is beginning to um, emerge for uh, capturing and, and, and storing the carbon dioxide. So we can, we can really push on that technology and make it, make it mandatory uh, across the entire country and across the entire world. So those are some things we can do to get, get after the carbon dioxide issue. Um, methane, though, is another important um, greenhouse pollutant, and uh, most of the methane that's emitted to the atmosphere comes from uh, livestock operations. Uh, cattle in particular, because of the way they digest their food apparently, um, produce a lot of methane gas. And uh, so here's, a, here's a, uh, a way that we can uh, do something good for the climate and also for our own health, uh, which is reducing meat com consumption, red meat consumption in particular. Um, thereby uh, reducing the amount of methane that's emitted from livestock and at the same time becoming healthier because we're not eating red meat, which we know is a big risk factor for cardiovascular disease. We know how to do it, actually. The technology exists. Um, what's missing so far is the political will for this collective action, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing at the grassroots level, uh, at, the, at the individual level, growing, growing interest and growing motivation to, to take action. What's lacking so far is the high-level uh, motivation to do that. In many cases, um, the, the, the activities, the policies that will be, have the most benefit for the global climate in terms of reduced emissions also have uh, direct health benefits in the local environment. Nobody really knows exactly how warm it needs to get before uh, the you know, Antarctic ice sheet really starts to melt or the Greenland ice sheet really starts to melt in a, in a serious way. If, that, if those things happen, sea level would go up 
by meters, by you know, you know, 20 or 30 feet. By continuing to tinker with the system and to take this risky, play this risky game that we've been doing with our with our globe, uh, we're, you know, every year that goes by, we're we're running a higher risk of uh, reaching one of these tipping points and. Whether it's during our lives or during our children's lives or grandchildren's lives, um, you know, each year that we wait, we're making the risk longer and bigger in the long term. And that's very, that's a great concern to me.